everyone, it's Kay. Welcome to a guide for my poison spiders occultist. The build focuses on survivability while still having good damage. It has lots of armor, energy shield recovery, and block cap without glancing blows. However, the minions do poison damage, so there's a ramp up time for full DPS. The build requires many specific items and will be expensive. And I've also included alternative gems if you want to use the squire. If you don't have any spiders, like when starting the map, put your cursor on top of your cultist, hold down Divine Aya, and use Riding Jar. Usually, the spiders will sustain themselves while mapping, but if they despawn, just use Divine Aya and Riding Jar again. Here is the passive tree at level 100. There are 4 key features. Divine Shield Keystone. 2 extra passive points from killing all bandits in Act 2. Testudo Anointment. And 8 Masteries. There's only one cluster jewel. It's a large jewel with 12 points, minion attack speed, 
and 35% increase effect. It shouldn't have any notables. In the two sockets, use forbidden jewels to get unnatural strength. The four jewel sockets are for reckless defense with 4 4 block. Don't worry about the critical strike chance because the body armor is the brass storm. The ascendancies are Malediction, Profane Bloom, Void Beacon, and Withering Presence. The Pantheons are Brian King for Freeze Immunity, and Rislatha to refill the Bright Ninja Flask. Here's an overview of the gear including gems, links, and examples. Note that the build uses many uniques. For the helmet, use Ancient Skull with Flesh Offering Attack Speed Enchant. The gems are Divine Aya, Cast Fall Channeling, and Desecrate. There's also Unlinked Flame Dash. Use this gem combination with the Riding Jar to raise spiders. For the body armor, use the Brass Storm to ignore extra damage from critical hits. The gems are Molten Shell, Determination, Vitality, Tempest Shield, Skitterbots, and Enlighten. The build will still work fine with Enlighten 3. For the gloves, use Asena's Gentle Touch for Temporal Chains. The gems are Cyclone, Castfall Channeling, Desecrate, and Divergent Flesh Offering. You don't need to use Cyclone all the time. Just use it to trigger Flesh Offering and to cast monsters on hit. For the boots, Try to get lots of resistances and movement speed. The gems are Malevolence, Increase Area of Effect, Awaken Generosity, and Empower. You can skip Empower if you want to save some currency. The weapon is Arakali's Fang, and you can ignore the stats because they don't affect your minions. The gems are Multi Strike, Awaken Unbound Ailments, and Withering Touch. If you want to save currency, Divergent Multi Strike is about 10% less DPS compared to Awaken Multi Strike. For maximum survivability, use Aegis Aurora. If you need a cheap option, you can use the Surrender or Ray Shield with Life Recovery. The gems are Bow Skeletons, Feeding Frenzy, and Culling Strike. Use the Skeletons against Pinnacle Bosses for extra DPS. You can trade Survivability for a big DPS boost with a Squire. Use Awakened Melee Physical Damage. Awaken Void Manipulation and Divergent Minion Damage. The amulet should be all surprising with Malevolence. Anoint the amulet with Testudo for extra attack block. You will probably need the rings to get strengths and dex. One of the rings must have despair cast on hit. For the belt, use Darkness Enthroned with a Ghastly Eye Jewel and Amanam's Gaze. 
Your minions get 20% mod thanks to the 75% increase effect from darkness in front. One of your flasks must be the riding jar for raising spiders. And for the others, I like to use Life with Bleed Immunity, Basalt with Extra Armor, Quicksilver, and Rumi's Concoction. As always, I'd like to give a big thank you to my patrons. And there are more patrons in Yada Tia. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And please check the pinned comments for any updates. Thanks for watching. Bye!